we're here at the 13th edition of the Antigua Forum, and today we're having a conversation with Stephen Bryan, Senior Fellow at the Future Africa Forum. Stephen, thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? I started life in management consulting, and that's where I, I sort of learned to problem solve. And then uh, probably about 15 years ago, I got involved in public policy in the UK, and from there, I worked as part of the team helping the Saudi Arabian uh, government transform itself um, with when the new King Salman came in in 2015. And that's where I got the bug for national transformation. I realized there was such potential if the right people could take on the right roles with the right, the right ambitions. And since then, I've been working in the African continent, primarily helping those countries and their leaders think through what it takes for them to emulate some of the best practices around the world. Was there a particular moment or event that inspired you and you thought, well, this is really powerful? I think it was reflecting back on my time in Saudi Arabia and realizing the contrast with my time in the UK. So the UK is a modern, developed country. And while I was involved in some of the bigger reforms um, of the, the coalition government in 2010, I realized that was an optimization game versus when I was in Saudi Arabia, that was a transformation effort. And then it said to me, okay, Transformation is really what I wanted to, to work on. What are you currently working on? What's your project? So the project I'm working on at the moment is to explore how we can help upcoming leaders develop the skills, the capabilities, and the knowledge to become state-spared women. So rather than having politicians leading a nation, let's try and have states people doing so. And that involves them understanding how successful nations have transformed themselves, what are the principles of markets, liberty, and democracy that they can apply to their circumstances, and then help them make sure that they are effective leaders when they, when they attain power. What challenges were you running into or, or observing in that you thought we need more powerful leaders? When talking to people who were involved, helping them on the political side and realize that the frustrations or the challenge that I saw on the policy side were very similar to those who were actually helping these leaders attain power. And we realized that there was a journey they had to go on. And when I saw what was happening before they attained power, and then when I saw how they were challenged when in power, I realized it was the same, it was the same thing. And therefore, we're, we're trying to combine this effort of recognizing it is a political game. Change has to work through a political process. It's not just pure policy theory, we've got to combine practice and the reality of persuading people, changing hearts and minds, changing a nation's view of itself, and then the more technocratic policy elements. Bringing those two together, I think, can make a big difference. How are you going about it? We're doing it in probably two stages. Um, the first stage is very much around content generation and dissemination. And then the second part of it is saying, if you want to be an effective leader, it is really important that when you achieve power and responsibility, you are as unencumbered with respect to vested interests as possible. Because I think we underestimate, we don't recognize the fact that a lot of leaders do have a good idea of what to do, do want to do the right thing, but it's often not possible to make those good decisions when in power because of the fact that nations have, whether it be tribes, business interests and others, that can be the blockers because they don't want to lose their position. And it's really important for leaders to recognize that it's not just a straightforward policy exercise, but is how do you manage to bring the nation with you? How do you help people recognize that a smaller slice of a much larger pie is a win for everybody rather than just them protecting what they have to bet? What made you want to bring this project to the Antigua Forum? Well, I came here last year. I was very, very lucky to be able to come as a participant, and I, I really enjoyed the process. I felt, as somebody who was able to walk around stations, I did my best to contribute, and it was a brilliantly effective process. And I, you know, we, we keep hearing trust the process, and I, I saw through that that this was a very effective way of challenging ideas, bringing alternatives to bear, getting to a point that you stress tested and you come out the other end with something different and better. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be great to take some of the ideas I have 
and subject them to that to that rigor and scrutiny. Uh, and I've certainly felt that uh, that's what I've experienced the last few days. Um, so by the end, I now have something that is not just thinking about Africa, but is looking at where can we help around the world with these ideas. And Latin America is an obvious uh, other region that this could have good impact in. And also, I realized that there were different subcomponents of the of the project, and actually different customers, different users could benefit from different pieces. So rather than saying there's one size fits all, here's a journey our users can go on to. Having been both a participant and now a project owner, would you share some of your reflections and lessons learned in the Antigua Forum? I, I have a lot more respect for project owners having, having gone through it now. Without the direct challenge, you're not forced to think. But then the soft voices are often the ones that help you see your way through the, the forest. What's your vision now for it? What do you take home in terms of your excitement, your vision? I take home uh, one level of a challenge. I, I have to go back to my team now and say, hey, for the last few days, I've been on a journey. I've got all these great new ideas. Um, and I have to help them, in effect, replicate the journey I've been on. Uh, so I have to enthuse them. I have to sort of provide a vicarious Antigua Forum uh, with, my, with my colleagues. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I think it would be really great for me to test how's that journey worked. I'm I'm excited. I've been I've been drinking the Kool Aid for the last few days, but actually talking with others, how that journey has gone and where I think we should go as a result. If they buy into it, then that's a great market test. Um, if they've got different questions, I will need to think about it. I expect maybe in a week's time. Again, there might be a little mini pivot to to try and balance. Uh, those who haven't been here with you know, the great ideas and excitement that I've, I've had here. What invitation would you extend to anyone watching this interview? A mentor of mine said to me a long time ago when I was in consulting, when you're working with people, have in the back of your mind the question, why might they be right? And for me, that has really come out in the last few days as I as I listen to those critiquing, I have to keep saying, why might they be right? And it may not be the direct challenge, but there's something there. And I found that by persisting and keeping pulling on that thread, I'd like worked out what was behind that question. There's, some, there's always something there that you can take from people's challenges, criticisms, provocations. And I think that can be transferred into so many areas of life as you build a project you engage with others, you challenge yourself, they challenge you, why might they be right? Thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for talking with us today. My pleasure, thank you. <laughs>